In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the arpeggiator in Logic Pro to create complex and colorful musical patterns within your musical compositions. Before we get started, let's define what an arpeggiator is, derived from the word arpeggio, a common technique in all forms of music from classic to pop. It simply means the playing of individual notes, usually within a scale, one at a time, up and down the octave range of the instrument. An arpeggiator, which can be found in most modern doors, such as Logic, or even on some hardware synthesizers, simulates this effect and turns whichever notes that you play into a running pattern, usually playing one note after the other in repetition. For example, if I create a C major chord, which is made up of the notes C, E, and G, without using an arpeggiator, you'd simply hear these notes as a sustained chord. But when you use an arpeggiator inserted as a MIDI effect, each note plays in turn, one at a time at the speed of your choice and in the direction that you choose within the arpeggiator settings. Now this allows you to create complex rhythmic patterns from your original chord and can really help to add flavor and energy to your compositions. So how do we do it? Well, let's begin by creating a new software instrument track. I'm going to select my Korg ARP Odyssey synth plugin for this example, because it's a reproduction of the original ARP Odyssey synth from the 70s, which was well known for its arpeggiator bass patterns. The sounds are great and have that really authentic feel. Now, if you don't have this plugin, I would recommend using Alchemy, which is perhaps the best of the built-in instruments within Logic Pro. When selecting your instrument, look for one that has a short attack and decay and release, such as a bass or lead sound, as these will usually provide the best results, but don't feel confined by that. You can experiment with any of the sounds in your digital instruments till you get the best results. So once you've selected your instrument, lay down your chord or your sequence of chords or even an individual note. For this example, I'm gonna use the pencil tool and write in the notes C, E, and G. To access the tool, create a MIDI region by right-clicking on the track. Then double click on it to reveal the editor. Select the pencil tool from the drop-down menu in the top section and write in your notes. If I play this back, you'll hear the basic chord. Sounds pretty boring, right? Let's add some spice by applying an arpeggiator to it. In Logic Pro, there are two ways to access the arpeggiator. The first and the easiest way to access the built-in arpeggiator in Logic is to click on the Smart Controls icon on the top left-hand corner of the screen. Then in the top right-hand corner of the Smart Control window, click on the arpeggiator icon. You can use the drop down list to change the note order, rate and octave range, or if you want to try out some factory presets, you can select any of the patterns below. For those of you who want full control over the arpeggiator, click on the open arpeggiator option. You can also access this by clicking on the MIDI effects tool in the channel strip on the left-hand side of your timeline. You can select from a range of preset patterns at the top, or you can use the detailed interface to manually adjust your arpeggiated pattern. You can change the rate which affects the speed of the sequence, the direction, that is whether it plays your notes up the keyboard, down or in both directions. Then to the right, you can change the variation of the pattern and even the octave range, how far up and down the keyboard the notes are to be repeated. Below this are even more controls. You can adjust the pattern by clicking on the blocks in the grid window. And next is the pattern option, which allows you to adjust the note length, randomness, velocity, swing, and cycle length. Then there's keyboard where you can change the scale and then the controller, which allows you to assign the pattern to different MIDI controllers. These are much more advanced effects, which you don't really usually have to access to get a great result. 
Well, that's enough talking from me in this video. If you're interested in watching how I develop out this concept a little bit further by adding an electronic drum kit using the pattern sequencer and adding a few extra elements, hang around for a bit longer and enjoy the on-screen demo.
So that brings us to the conclusion of this introductory tutorial on how to use the arpeggiator in Logic Pro 10. Hopefully you can use this tip to help you add some color and more dynamics to your composition. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And as always, if you have any questions about the content you've seen here today, drop them in the comments box below. See you on the next one. Bye for now.